Hello, this is Dick Wall, and I'd like to take you on a bit of a tour of Scala Doc. Uh, there's quite a few more features than you might suspect, even if you've been using Scala for a while. Some of the things I'm going to show you might be new to you. So let's start off from the uh, standard Scala Doc. If you just go to uh, API Current, uh, let's get rid of the package, uh, it should take you directly to the standard Scala library. Uh, and it brings up the root package. Now, there's a few things right here that are interesting. The first is that this, as you can see, has a P icon and it says root package. And this is package document or package object documentation. One of the things Scala has is package objects, which are kind of holders for things like vowels and defs that might not have a home inside of a specific class but you want them to come in when you import a package. And from Scala Doc's viewpoint, this is actually a place where often you get some interesting uh, extra context or information about things. So if we scroll, scroll down, for example, to uh, Scala Collection, the Collection API has a high level guide about how to use collections and things that collections have in common. And this is one of the better kept secrets of Scala Doc is this package documentation. A lot of people don't know it's there. And as a result, <laughs> people haven't gone to visit it. So some of the packages don't actually have documentation. And we're looking at fixing this over time. But in the meantime, uh, you know, it, it's at least worth a look to see if the uh, documentation is there. The next feature is searching. So if we go up here and let's say we want to look at the implementation of list so we can click we can type in list and you see here that there's a scala collection immutable list uh, and a scala collection mutable and a bunch of lists under here the one i'm interested in in particular is the scala collection immutable list so let's click on that this takes us to the list class documentation and this is the next thing which is almost like an easter egg uh, this is going to improve soon as there are in the next version of Scala, are going to be links up here uh, in this area of the screen that actually give you the uh, ability to jump or navigate more easily to some of these things, which are sort of a little bit hidden or clever right now. But if you hover over it, this peel over here tells you that there's more information available. And the information available is actually in the companion object. So if I click on this icon, it actually takes me to the companion object. And if I click on it again, it takes me back to the class object. And the companion object is, is where a lot of the factory methods and other useful uh, functionality on lists themselves is. For example, fill, uh, range, tabulate, all of these sort of things, and the apply method, which takes the variable arguments and constructs a list. So this is where that information is available. You'll notice the blue icon with O, uh, which means object, and the green icon C, are also mirrored over at the sides here, where you can see, for example, list, list map, and list set have both uh, companion objects and class definitions. There's also a, uh, traits, which are this uh, kind of turquoise T color. Uh, there's a there's a trait, and you'll sometimes see traits with companion objects as well. You can get directly to the companion object for a list or any of these by clicking on that icon directly. So then it doesn't take you to the the class, which is the default behavior if you just click on the name, uh, but it takes you directly to the companion object. Another thing is you'll notice both here, this is a hot link, the uh, package name, and so are the packages up here. And you can use these breadcrumbs to jump to any of the packages along the way. So I can click directly on collection and get back to that collection, or I can click on a Scala collection immutable. This is one of the packages that doesn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of useful stuff in it but uh, the collection one definitely does. So if we go back up to collection, that has a nice overview. Next up, this is a real gem. Uh, let's say, for example, you're using the dot reverse method and you want to see all of the places that that's implemented. You, can't, you, you can start to sort of guess the classes or traits that they might be on, and you might be lucky. But another option is to use these letters at the top. There's a a symbol and then there's a whole bunch of letters at the top here and what these are is indexes into all of the tokens that Scala doc has been able to find during the documentation process during building the Scala docs so if we go to the R and click on it 
we'll actually see all of the tokens that Scala knows about in this library that start with R. And if we do it now a search in the uh, in the window here and just say reverse, then we can find all of the reverse methods. These are the capital ones, but here's the short, here's the lowercase ones. And here's reverse and all of these implemented. So you can see, for example, list has a reverse method. So we can click on list uh, and then we can find the reverse in here again using the, uh, the search. So this is actually a class that implements it, not just one that has it available in the API, but one that actually has an implementation of it. And so, yeah, there we can see reverse on list. Now, what we might want to do is look at the source code for that. And you may not know this either, but uh, the source is actually linked from Scala doc. You may not have noticed this. And if you click on this, it takes you to GitHub and we'll show you the source. So if we want to now, we can actually search for that uh, reverse method, def reverse, and scroll down to the next occurrence of it, which should be the one. And there we go, override lift it reverse. And what this does is basically uh, builds a new list out of the existing list. Uh, and it's using a while loop for speed. Uh, occasionally that's uh, an optimization that Scala libraries use. Okay, that's pretty nice. Uh, some of the other things we can do here. Uh, something that you may or may not know about Scala is that traits are linearized in Scala. And sometimes it's very useful to see what that linearization is. If you want to do that, uh, for any given type, you can actually open up the uh, linear supertypes. I won't do it on list because list is rather large uh, in these. Let's try something like future. Uh, so we'll go to Scala concurrent future. And this is a good one. You can see this is a trait with a companion object. So on future, let's open up the linear supertypes. And you'll see, actually, that one's a bit too simple. Uh, it's simply a weightable any ref and any. But you can see that you can get the, the, the full uh, list of linear supertypes in the order that they'd be visited uh, when you call super calls on there, which is very nice. You can also see the type hierarchy. That's not very interesting for future. But if we go back to list here and open up the type hierarchy, uh, it should be quite a bit more interesting. So now you can see how list relates to all of the things that it inherits from. Uh, the implementations of list, so cons and nil, uh, and some of the implicit conversions that are available as well. So this is a very nice way to explore Scala. You can also see known subclasses of list, and that shows us cons and nil again. So we can uh, drill into those. There's one more trick I want to show you before uh, clearing out of here, and that is focus, Scala doc focus. So what we can do is if we if we wanted to see the sets that are available and you just type set, there's quite a lot here that uh, implements set. We're really interested in the things that are under collection only. We're not interested in bean setter uh, and some of these other things down here. So we'll just look at things that are particularly under Scala collection immutable. So what we can do is hit focus on that and it says focused on Scala collection immutable and then due to a limitation of Scala doc you do actually have to change something here so just you know adding a space and deleting it again is enough to trigger this now we see only the sets from uh, the Scala collection immutable if we want to see the lists from here we can type list instead uh, if we want to see something like the maps, we can see all the map implementations. And it's just focused on that one package now instead of everything else. So hopefully that's uh, some useful information on using Scala Doc. There's actually quite a bit to explore and uh, some very nice navigation options that make it easier to find your way around uh, and learn what's going on. Thanks.